Thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, here's our agenda of what we're going to be talking about. Really uh, first just focusing on telling you a little bit more about who we are. Uh, going through our, our typical project methodology, going through some examples, sharing some benefits, and of course leaving some time for your questions. Uh, so just to start off to um, share a little bit more about RPI, um, we are an uh, Infor Alliance partner, uh, Cloud Suite Specialized. Um, we were founded in Baltimore, which is where we are now, uh, in 1999, but we also have um, uh, offices throughout the U.S. We have one in Kansas City and Tampa, and we cover all areas of loss and not just supply chain, also uh, finance, HR. Uh, we have a, a pretty large tech team, and we also have an imaging practice as well. And then a little bit about Vizient. So we're headquartered in Irving, Texas, um, and we go back all the way to 1977. We started as the uh, Voluntary Hospitals of America, or VHA. And then in 2015, VHA and UHC became Vizient, and then MedAssets joined us in 2016. So we are now the nation's largest member-owned healthcare services company. And um, think past just your traditional GPO. We also offer um, great technology platform, analytics, you name it. And then our advisory solutions team is made up of 550 consultants, of which I'm in the supply chain operations division. And I, I directly lead all of our supply chain assessments. Great. So really, um, you know, our two worlds meet um, because we have some industry experience and we also have the loss and expertise. So in so many scenarios, we're continually bumping into each other and see that we can really truly benefit from each other's knowledge. Um, so it's been a really cool partnership so far. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we know supply chain 101. Um, we know what leading practice is in supply chain. And when we go into assess, you know, we can help out with org structure, process improvement, you know, people, processes, technology. But then getting in on the technology piece, getting into the specifics of how do you make loss and work, um, that's where I really think we have value in working with RPI. So I'm going to start a little bit, you know, when, when folks ask us, hey, Chris, what does a supply chain assessment look like or, or um, you know, how can you help us out? I always like to start with kind of defining the problem. So what I see out there in the industry um, currently, sometimes with our members, um, as well as really anybody who's even not part of Vizient, you know, we see this in the industry. But um, some of the challenges that a supply chain vice president or director may come across is, um, you know, they're responsible for supply expenses, but they don't necessarily control all of it. So they're lacking an in, in insufficient central point of responsibility or authority for supply chain. Um, same thing with all the processes within supply chain. They're not always clearly defined or are they standardized. Um, and we talk about, you know, investment in infrastructure. Um, do you have the right people doing the right jobs? Do you have enough folks doing them? Technology, do you have the right technology? or? Um, if you don't, you know, how do you then develop an ROI to help pay for that? Um, so those are some things we see that's a challenge and specifically in supply chain and healthcare that we try to help our members out with. And when you think of like the industry paradigm, what we're trying to change is instead of being that transactional supply chain, really trying to be a strategic player that's at the table with the C-suite. So, you know, one thing that I always think is great is when a supply chain director can work with the C-suite and say, Here's how much we should take out of our budget next year. And it's based off of, you know, analytics tools that they're using. Um, it's based off of sound decisions instead of just being told by the C-suite, well, you got to cut a million dollars off the bottom line. So um, those ones that we see are successful are the ones that are constantly at the table with the C-suite. And then when, you know, our team gets together, we have over 45 consultants just in the supply chain operations division, and we get together once a year and we say, okay, what are the eight to 10 things that we really see what would make a leading practice supply chain? And when we go to do an assessment, one of the first things we ask when we, we, we ask for, you know, pre-visit items, we collect data and information from our members before we come on site. One of the first things we look at is the strategic plan. So I want to know, you know, what is your plan for focusing on people, process, and technology over the next three years? And then what are your, your biggest pain points or initiatives that you're putting in place for the next 12 months? So more detail into the first year and then, you know, additional information to help fill out that three-year plan. 
Um, what control do you have? What control may be lacking? What should you have? You know, but those organizations that are centrally, you know, supply chain is centralized and, and they are managing every aspect of the supply chain, um, those tend to, to be able to control those costs and manage better. Um, as well as optimal analytics capabilities. So making sure you have the right data in, in and out and then having all of that data available to help you make decisions. So performance dashboards and then all of the information that goes into it, do you have the right tools in place? Uh, how automated are you in purchasing? So we, Vizient, has an e-commerce exchange platform. You know, we're looking for how automated are you in, in setting up your, your purchase orders for EDI. Same thing with electronic invoices, your A10s. You know, how, how integrated are you with there? Are you building a supply formulary in, in your purchasing templates? And I know that's one thing that RPI has helped us out with is automating some of those purchasing templates within Lawson. Um, are you documenting your process flows, value stream maps? Do you have all your policy and procedures up to date? Do you have a vendor management program? Do you, are you using vendor scorecards? I'm working with a member right now to develop vendor scorecards to grade those strategic partners that that particular hospital system is working with. Um, I already mentioned the C-suite presence, that's huge, um, but also is collaborating with clinical leadership. So, you know, the foundation for clinical to supply chain integration is, is working with those key leaders, like let's say your OR director, um, and you know, making sure that not only are you providing good service, but then you're also educating them on being good stewards financially of, of how to manage supplies within the OR. Um, and then all of this needs to be backed up with the dashboard that, that's full of KPIs. And I know, Stephanie, that's one of the things we're talking about today, too, is, you know, how do you measure, but then how do you maybe get that out of loss? And, um, but those are, those are some key points that we really see as, as leading practice currently. So getting to our assessment a little bit, and I know ours is a little bit different, so I'll kind of start first, and then we could talk about how, how RPI conducts the assessment. But... Um, you know, we always hold a call with our members. We want to know what your needs are. We want to know the size of the organization, the areas we're going to tour. Um, we also want to hear your pain points. So, you know, what are you developing for your strategic plan over those next three years? And then we will um, collect information and then we come on site to conduct an assessment. You know, like if it's a standalone facility, typically it's a couple of weeks on site. Um, and then we go home and, and we report right. And we basically put every observation and then corresponding recommendation to improve into a report. And that also includes a 12 to 18 month action plan on where you can improve. Um, and then we come back and we deliver the report. And then if you need additional um, help with implementation, we can help out too. But um, just one of the things that we focus on is really the whole supply chain um, continuum. We start with item master, go into purchasing contracting, value analysis, how goods are received in, how they're distributed to the floors, um, put away in inventory, inventory management, how well are you managing that inventory, and then all the way through to final payments. So how well is uh, purchasing working with accounts payable and, and what do we see as leading practice? And this isn't just Chris Mealy's opinion. Um, our, our leading practice compendium is actually based on over 250 um, different things that we look at um, that we have formed as a group over, over the years I um, mean, conducting our assessments. So we are grading you to the, to, to the same leading practice every time. And that changes as years go on. But, but that gives, just gives you a little picture of, of how we conduct our assessments. Great. And then here's where we're, uh, we're a team and we kind of tag each other in. So um, RPI goes about their assessments in a, a very similar manner, but we're focusing on different things, right? We're, we're focusing in on your ERP system, how it's being utilized, uh, you know, where are your pain points, what's your strategic plan, and how is the, the system helping you get there. Um, so we really start off with a discovery, uh, and we also have a call before we're on site, uh, and we uh, work to define an agenda. And, um, you know, typically we, we hold these interview sessions. Um, you know, with each group of supply chain. Uh, we meet with MMIS uh, administrator, we uh, work with inventory control, we uh, go through receiving, we're also touring your facility, um, but really most importantly to us is we're looking through your data. Uh, we wanna see uh, if uh, the information matches to what's being said in the system, right? Uh, perception is reality. So we wanna really break that down uh, into as much detail as we can. Um, so during these interview sessions, um, you know, there's, there's lots of opportunity for us to be able to um, 
provide information. Just do normal uh, knowledge sharing. Uh, you know, you're talking about uh, a problem not being able to access this information, and we go, oh, that's actually this MA278 report. You can look it up here. And then we go and try to look it up together, and you don't have access to it. Uh, so there we know we do have a, a, a report available. We just need to submit a security request to get that changed for you. So we call that quick wins. Um, and those are delivered while we're there on site, uh, going through the discovery with you. Uh, they could just be a quick um, training session. Uh, it could actually be just some troubleshooting. So those are shared while we're on site and also married together um, when we come back uh, and present on the recommendations. So uh, discovery can last anywhere from three to five, um, you know, to 10 days, it really depends on how large the organization is uh, and what your pain points are. If you're looking uh, for us to drill in a little bit uh, in more detail to your, your clinical interface or uh, you know, uh, breaking down your use of MSCM, we may need a little bit more time to um, peel back the layers. Um, so after, um, after we perform the on-site uh, visit and go through the interviews, um, and go through all of, all of the data that we uh, gathered from your system, um, we go back to report right, very similar. Uh, we use a, a traffic light approach. Um, so green, um, the green check mark is uh, optimal. So the, the process is working well. Um, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that we won't have any recommendations. We, we may provide recommendations there for uh, continuous improvement. Um, then we have satisfactory where uh, the process seems to be working, but uh, it's not working all that well. There are some process breakdowns there that uh, we need to account for, uh, and we'll list out some recommendations. Then there's unsatisfactory. Typically, this is your PO 135, your RNI that has gotten crazy and out of control, and you need some help there. Um, so these are um, efforts that um, you know require uh, a moderate um, to high effort uh, to correct. Um, so uh, typically a project is built around them uh, to start moving forward. Um, so we go by section. Um, typically it is by module uh, within the application. So IC for inventory control, PO for purchase order, so on and so forth. Um, but we also uh, start with general observations for the supply chain as a whole, um, as well as a focus on MMIS administration since um, you know, it, it could be throughout uh, each of the modules and, and you know, there's usually a re responsible person or department that's controlling all that. Um, so we list out our, our observations of what we saw when we were on site, uh, what our set recommendations were. Uh, we have that status indicator, um, but we also provide um, uh, a relative value and a relative effort to um, help you see where the true value is. Um, so you know it looks like it's going to be a significant effort to do this, but you know the value is you know medium. So you may go for another. Um, uh, another area first uh, to start making some improvements. Uh, and then lastly, we, we group these together uh, to an initiative. Uh, and this really helps us uh, to provide more detail um, on what our true recommendations are in that particular area. So uh, for training process and procedure, we may actually um, you know, provide some quick job aids for um, you to start building um, from. So here we have some reds and yellows, right? It doesn't mean that's all that we give you feedback on. We also really pay attention to what you're doing well um, and, and really try to point that out to, uh, to really uh, support your team and, and really point out where uh, you're doing things well and that needs to be, uh, that needs to be addressed with your team, right? Um, make everyone feel good and, and that you're going in the right direction. And um, you know, it, it's, it's been, very interesting for me as a consultant to go in and everyone, you know, no matter where you go, everyone thinks that they're doing all these things so wrong and sometimes you just need to take a step back and go, you know what, that is pretty cool. We're doing this a little bit differently than other people and maybe we just thought this was normal, but there's other organizations that um, haven't been that creative and could benefit from that information too. So uh, really good to reflect on that. Um, so once everything's grouped together in initiative and we have some feedback there, we provide a roadmap. Um, you know, this could be a one to three year, it could be one to five year, it also can be as much as three, six, you know, 12 months, just again, depending on what you're looking for as an organization, we'd go through this. 
Um, so um, this we would uh, this roadmap we would work on together uh, to make sure that we're on the same page. And this is uh, lining up with your uh, supply chain um, um, strategy as well. Yeah, ab absolutely, and very similar process. So we have a, a similar stoplight report. So you know, I talked about the 250 you know attributes that we look for for leading practice. We try to roll those up into six or seven key things for each supply chain function. So right here is just a, a an example of what we do in purchasing and payment. So you know, how well are you working with accounts payable? Where there can there be improvements? But then behind this, you know, where we have comments, um, you know, we grade you in doesn't meet meet or exceeds. And we give you some comments on where what we have seen in our observations and where to improve. But then behind this is then that clear detail of every recommendation of here's what you should be doing over X period of time to get to leading practice. Um, and then just like your roadmap, same thing, quick wins, first 90 days, here's where you really should focus because it's easy to do, it doesn't require a lot of investment. But then like if there's a technology or like let's say a loss in module is completely missing and that requires investment, you know, we'll work with that supply chain director as we're developing this 18 month action plan and say, where would this recommendation fit for you, um, you know, based on cost and based on, you know, getting set up for budget. Um, and we'll develop that and, th and then place those in the right spots. Great. So what's that look like, right? Um, you know, part of uh, having a, a, a loss and specialized consultant to, uh, uh, come in and, and oversee your, your overall process. We're also looking at um, what app applications you have that you may not be fully utilizing or um, you know uh, just certain things that may need to just be turned on. So we really want to see what you have now that you can leverage um, and, and work on that solution together. Yeah, so for our on-site, you know, let's keep purchasing as the example. We'll sit down with the whole purchasing team. You know, we'll have a list of questions we need to ask, but we also want to sit down with the staff and watch them actually perform their work. So um, I want to see a, a, a request made by the end user go to requisition, go to PO, that get placed, how are back orders managed, um, and then all the way then through to receiving and then payment. So we're looking at that entire process but then we're also applying um, you know, our leading practice metrics along the way. So here are just a sum, sum for you. you know, we're looking for your special order type requisitions. You know, those should be less than 10% uh, of your overall. So you know, we will collect that data ahead of time and, and we'll be able to tell you know, here's where you can improve, but it, we're really more making the recommendation in the process. Here's how you tackle um, you know, non-catalog spend. So once it's been used three times, then maybe that should kick off a process to then go look at that and have that go through value analysis to get approved as a, an official item. So where we can help is really making the recommendations on how to improve the process, but then working within Lawson and then setting up these metrics and KPIs um, to, to move forward is where we partner with RPI to help. So in this particular example, there's some uh some KPIs that need to be captured. And, and in, this, um, in this example here, uh, we were able to deliver on a, a dashboard solution. So this is utilizing Lawson's uh, business intelligence, LBI, um, to, to help define some reports to grab the information out of Lawson because that's the struggle, right? Uh, you have these things that you're chasing after, but where do you get this information from in Lawson? You know, what's of value to you? Uh, and how do you make sure that the information is accurate and, and giving you everything that you need? Uh, so in, in this particular uh, example, um, there are subdivided by um, area. So we have materials management, inventory control, purchasing, uh, you know, MMIS team, uh, and then receiving and delivery. Uh, and this is an example of the breakdown of one of those reports. So this is POs transmitted via EDI. So it's a, a snapshot in time. It is transactional in a way. Um, you know, it's not showing the, um, all of the PO detail, but it's trying to put together here, you know, for, for Biomet, you are set up um, to transmit e EDI, um, but you've only had nine POs uh, submitted EDI. You've had 22 that were submitted uh, in another manner, either email or, or fax or printed out, who knows. So you're not, you're not automating your, um, your uh, PO creation and, and transmittal here. So something to capture. Uh, 
You can definitely change the output of this. You could have it be a, a pie chart and that could display differently on this dashboard and, and those uh, pie charts could display here. This is just one particular um, example breakdown. So um, in this particular scenario, the customer did have LBI, so we were able to um, provide that to them. Um, but really, it's just data. We understand where you need to get the detail from, so no matter what solution that you may have, we can help you get there and uh, share that information, and um, you can use it in any tool that you have. Absolutely. So that's what we had put together. I'm not sure if anyone has any questions um, that they'd like to ask maybe talk through any kind of problem that you may have had and so we definitely want to give folks a, a, a minute to, to put in some questions I do have one here related to uh, uh, GS1 standards um, and it relates to uh, to Vizian. is that in the plans to uh, to support those yeah so you know GS1 and I just came back from the arm um, the arm convention and, and, and it's still going they're still working through a lot of things so we do partner with GS1 um, and, and we can get you in touch with that organization, but having those standards and then how the G10s, how do you build then all that into Lawson, that's where we would partner with RPI and how to get that information in there. Right, I, I do think that Lawson has built in the fields for it at this yes, point. Yes, they have, so. uh, both uh, for the GLN and the G10, so it's part of the item master record. Have we seen much adoption with that at this point? Or? Um, people are just starting to use it now. I know that there's, uh, there was some quirky things that were happening when it was first released, but it's gotten a lot better. I, I think it's more of um, the MMIS administration having the resources there to make sure that it's up to date and, and keeping up with it. Uh, and it's also just having a general understanding of what the value is. Um, you know, it needs to be built uh, by the unit of measure and how that unit of measure is being issued out. Uh, is it uh, required for your clinical interface and they're the ones that want the information? How do you kind of make sure that that's up to date and uh, make sure that you're really taking advantage of that information as well? Otherwise, you're just spending the time to put it in there and it's not going anywhere. Uh, I think another benefit um, of the G10s too is um, uh, for recalls as well. So I, I think that's why it's more so getting a lot of uh, adoption and, and traction. Yeah, I believe there's a, is a UDI requirement for next year, I, I believe, um, or it's the end of this year, I can't remember. 